uh, we now have an architect. You've probably been there before. He's been here for 13 years. And you've probably stepped and walked around and eaten in uh, one of his uh, creations. And, and he actually designed Clark Key. So let's welcome Stephen. And he's going to talk about home farming from an architectural point of view. Thank you. That's right, I'm an architect. Um, it's like okay, I'm cool. Um, this project we invented uh, about two years ago now, and a little bit like the sort of entrepreneurs that you've heard speak this afternoon, I suppose we exercise our entrepreneurial uh, ideas and spirit through inventing our own projects, and Home Farm is an invented project. And it was invented basically to start a conversation with the authorities in Singapore about two key issues, some of which you've heard a little bit about today, which is uh, the crisis of farming in Singapore. There's basically very little farming. And the other thing is um, elderly care living, which is a bit of a disaster in Singapore. Like most countries in the world, they don't take it very seriously. So Home Farm is about bringing these two traditionally siloed activities together aged care living and market gardening in one place. And the project started, I was traveling somewhere and read an article in Newsweek magazine. And it was a, an article about Japan and uh, the aged care crisis in Japan, about diapers for adults outselling diapers for children. I'm sure some of you have heard that before. And it just paints this horrible picture in your head and I thought, I was a bit disturbed about it when I read it, but by the time I'd got off the plane, I'd convinced myself, well, it's not really your problem, and you don't need to do anything about it. You can just carry on doing your day job and don't worry about issues like that. But it stayed with me, and we started a conversation about it in my studio, and we took it very seriously, and Home Farm came out of that headline. And um, these are the two, I suppose, crux issues that we try to deal with. The diagram on the top, the map of Singapore, and the amount of farmland that's been reduced since the rapid urbanization of the city, sort of post the colonial era. And about sort of destruction as well, or the reduction in the sort of traditional Asian family unit. The number of people you had in this country to look after old people was diminished rapidly from, as you can see, in 1970 to where we are now. So a little bit like Japan, it's not as bad in Singapore yet, but it will be, um, about the number of younger people in the family there to look after their parents and grandparents in the future. So what happens to them? And also, you've heard a little bit about this today as well, um, this sort of declining of the traditional family unit, the lack of self-esteem for the older people when they go into aged care living facilities, and what do we do about it? We want to provide a nice environment for the older people uh, in their retirement. And you've heard a little bit about this as well, the lack of farmland and what happens when there are food crises uh, that affect Singapore, because Singapore imports practically 90, 95% of everything that's eaten here. So it's trying to take these two issues very seriously and bring them together in quite a new way to create a new typology, if you will. Uh, the traditional aged care living facilities, we all know about them. We perhaps have grandparents or parents who are living in them. If they're not living with you at home, they're pretty desperate environments and very sad places for you to visit, and perhaps even worse if you're actually living there. So we want to provide aged care living facilities, not isolated from the community, but within a new community and using sort of market gardening to support that community. So that's the idea of home farm, the diagram on the right. So this is what it's like, usually. It's not alone in Singapore. It's just like this in my home country in the United Kingdom. It's like it in France, Switzerland, all over the world. These people don't have self-esteem any longer. They're not able to earn a living. They're not contributing to the community positively. Um, and it tends to be, and this, again, is not just in Singapore, that. Um, aged care living facilities are always built on the periphery of cities where land is cheap. So there's an automatic dislocation between 
older people in the community that once supported them. They can't go to the shopping mall, they can't go to the community center, they can't see their grandchildren, and the visits they get, it takes you hours to cross the country to go and visit them, perhaps. So we wanted to create something that's in the heart of the community and not isolated from it. And why not have this in your retirement? My grandparents, my mother, my parents all like being in a garden. It seems to be quite natural. Um, there's a great science fiction writer called Isaac Asimov who wrote about creativity. And in this thesis that he wrote about creativity, he said that if you come up with an idea, it always seems that it's been there. That's the sort of height of the creative genius, I think. And it seems to me that sort of a living environment that combines gardening for older people is one of those things. Once it's done, everybody will want to do it. It's sort of automatic. So that's what we try to aim to do. And there are a number of sort of pillars uh, that support this about the family unit and creating a community for older people, not just in isolation, but with younger children, uh, middle-aged people, et cetera, in one environment. Sustainable design, of course, it goes without saying. A productive garden um, to create value and create income for the older people. And a health and wealth, um, wellness focus as well for the development. So here we've got a cross-section of the society living in this development. It's not just about healthcare, but it's about learning, it's about education, and all sorts of things to keep them active and uh, stave off that terrible disease called dementia as long as possible. So in this environment, it's not just about aged care living. There'll be a shop as part of the farm, uh, the food court, of course, uh, lots of social services, a clinic, a library, crash, and other recreation facilities. So you've got a cross-section of the things that you'd normally find in a society all in this one location. And this is what it's like. The model is based on current HDB ideas about a variety of types of units from single people to an older couple living together or an older couple living with their children and the three generation apartment where they live with their children as children as well. And you can see the inner faces of this development is all hydroponic farming. So the galleries that if you imagine this is HDB, all the gallery areas that give you access to of the development are all faced with hydroponic farming, intensive urban farming technology that the people who live here, not just the old people, they can sort of earn part-time income uh, from the work that they do in this farm. It's not meant to be uh, a labor camp for old people. Um, it's voluntary work. You don't have to work here. Not everybody is interested in farming, of course. But it allows them to sort of take part and engage in the community and derive income from it. So they're getting a level of self-esteem back from the activities that take place in this environment. So all the growing takes place at the upper levels. And you can see there are two or maybe three different types of farming. Soil-based farming at the low levels where you need deeper soil depths. And then the upper levels that shroud the facades are the hydroponic systems. Quite intensive, so you're getting many crops uh, throughout the year. Basically, they're leaves. Um, if you go into uh, one of the sort of uh, pay more shops in Singapore, a bag of leaves is very expensive. And here you can provide leaves at quite low cost, uh, NTUC type prices. And we calculated the sort of tonnage of uh, farming that's created here. And basically, you can earn maybe $6 million every year by selling this product on the open market. And part of that income is used to pay the people who work here. So it's quite a sort of social idea. And at the ground floor, you can see the sort of pavilions that occupy the garden and front the garden. That's where the clinic would be, where the food court would be, where the crush would be, all serving the sort of facilities and the people, the residents that live here. So the third generation, well, you can read that. I don't need to read it to you. They're very active. You know, when you're 65 these days, you know, you can run probably more fit than I am. But uh, you can take part in all those sorts of activities that give you, as I said, some subsistence income that might pay for your aircon bills or might pay for your medical bills. But it's about 
activity and engagement with the community, the wider community that lives here, to create that idea of interaction uh, that, as I said, staves off the sort of notions of dementia. So we've used this project and taken it to uh, the URA and a variety of other people. Everybody likes this idea very much. They see it as sort of a natural extension of perhaps what HDB are doing. The big problems that they think the sort of social issues. They've asked us some very strange questions about the proposal, saying, well, how do you stop people stealing their neighbor's plants? You know, very basic sort of social issues. All the architectural issues, all the pragmatic issues that need to be resolved, they're very simple. But social issues are the most complicated issues, I suppose, that surround this project. But it's one that's well worth talking about to deal with those key problems of how do you deal with aging in a community very seriously <coughs> And how do you deal with what a lot of people have been talking about here today, the sort of farming crisis that's gone on in Singapore? You know, there's great benefits from the rapid urbanization that's happened in the city uh, over the last 50 years. Everybody gets full enjoyment about that, but it's at the cost of farming. There isn't any farming. You go to Cranji to find the sort of nearest farms. But this brings farming back into the center of the city, like lots of people have been talking about, but perhaps not on this sort of scale. So the people who live here can derive the income from picking, planting, packaging. It's got its own graphic identity. Or selling to the open market and generating a lot of income by doing that. And they can use that income, as it says. There they get salary, offset their rental. They get free produce, so they're eating healthier, etc., etc. And the system is a very sustainable system as a a fish farm on the roof that provides nutrient-rich water into the hydroponic system where the basic planting system grows. And that water is recycled, of course. And then all the waste from the farming goes into a biomass power station. So all the energy that's created on this site is basically free of charge. All the public areas all get air conditioning for free because of that holistic 360-degree cycle of the energy story for the building. It's a bit like the way that Gardens by the Bay works. I don't know how many of you know that, but all the waste that end parks generate goes into creation of this sort of cool th that feeds the big greenhouses that are in the Bay Area. So it's a similar system to that. So a great place for older people to retire to, I think. And we located, as you see, next to the hospital. Um, it's a theoretical project, so we can put it one on earth we like. Doesn't really matter, but the point to talk to the government is about it doesn't need to be high rise, doesn't need to be too dense. It should be quite open, very green environment. And it should be within the city center because of those points that I made about connectivity uh, with the urban population and not located somewhere out of town. So, that's Home Farm. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Would you stay just for the next and the last talk? Because I think... You have to go? Okay. Sorry. Um, thank you, Stephen. Uh, I, I think the point I want to make about URA's decision-making is such that the smaller problem about people stealing your vegetables and fruits stops them from making a bigger decision about solving the elderly care. So th sometimes that's our decision-making process. We worry about the small things, but actually here's the big decision that needs to be taken. What is more pressing? What's more urgent? So thank you very much.